Like imagine if for some reason technology advances and we're able to live into our hundreds and be healthy, right? You don't want to run out of money. So you want to make sure that you plan now so that you are saving, investing, and that you can retire early and most importantly, rich. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Generation Wealth. How are you? Hope you're doing great. Thanks for tuning in again. We are going to talk a little bit about retirement. This is what everybody wants to do, right? But you want to do it well. You want to get to retirement and actually have money to live and live comfortably so that you don't have to adjust your lifestyle. So that's what we're going to talk about today. And we're going to look at a few factors of what you actually need to retire. What is your cost of living and where you retire and how much that is going to factor in to what exactly you need in order to retire. So with careful planning, with discipline, with saving and investing habits, I know that you can achieve the retirement of your dreams, but let's break down how much you really need. So according to research by Bank Rate, the average American worker will need at least $1 million in savings. That's today, in 2023, in order to retire comfortably. Now, that estimate can jump at least to $2 million if you factor in inflation, which is at a 40-year all-time high right now. And as living costs continue to rise over the next 15, 10, 20 years when it is for you to retire. So when it comes to retirement, where you live can significantly help or hurt the situation. And I guess it's more of not just where you live now, but where you want to live when you retire. So let's look at three popular retirement destinations in the U.S. and do a price comparison to see what each of these states would look like and what would you need if you wanted to retire there. So number one, Arizona. The cost of living in Arizona varies greatly depending on the city or the town that you're in. You can get 50 acres of land for $100,000 in places, and you can get one acre for $2.5 million. So it really depends on the area of which you're going to live. But generally speaking, it falls within the nation's average. And according to, I hope I'm saying this right, Nubio, N-U-M-B-E-O.com, which this is a great website for you to write down, as it gives you the ability to rank states in their cost of living, not just for when you retire, but now as to where to live. Arizona gets a 73.4 score out of 100, which is lower than the national average. Housing in Arizona is relatively affordable still. I can't even believe I'm saying that. But the average one-month rental for a one-bedroom apartment ranges anywhere from $800 to $1,200, while a median-priced home in the state, not in certain areas, but the state still is $349,000, which is just slightly above the national median. Other factors that, that really come into the score are transportation, public transportation, utilities, water, what is your gas, electric, and it all tends to be pretty affordable in Arizona. The cost of groceries are also factored in. Arizona is generally in line with the national average, and overall, the cost of living in Arizona might be slightly lower than some other state. It offers residents high quality of life, tons of sunshine, abundant natural beauty, pretty relaxed lifestyle, I can say that. Um, I can say that myself, and many recreational activities. Now, we want to go to the complete opposite end of the spectrum, and let's look at another one, pretty common place to live, but super, super expensive, California. So here's a few breakdown of the key points of California and why it's one of the worst, as far as expense, places to live. Housing. Housing in San Francisco, LA, San Diego, all of those cities are very, very expensive. The average cost of a home in California widely varies by location, but can easily exceed one, two million dollars for not much house. (laughs) Renting is also very costly. You know, you can have a monthly modest apartment, $2,000, $3,000, $4,000 a month. And the property taxes, depending on where you are, could be low, could be really high. But your daily expenses of living, like groceries, a lot higher in California. You know, an average gallon of milk is about $1.50 but it's about $3 in California. Apples, produce are all a lot more expensive. Transportation costs, gas, gasoline prices, those are all higher than the national average. 
state taxes, state income tax, car insurance premium are all higher, and healthcare costs can be a lot more for retirees. So you always want to make sure that you take a look at everything when deciding where to retire, but also where to live, because you're going to need substantial more money every single month as far as living expenses, if you're going to live. And of course, if you're going to retire, you want to make sure that the money that you have saved in investment is going to stack up and you're going to get the lifestyle that you're used to living. Okay, so let's look at the top retirement state in the country. Let's see if you've guessed it. Florida. Of course, the sunny climate, the world-class beaches, and the lifestyle is one reason that Florida is very appealing to many retirees, but generally the cost of living is much lower than the average U.S. city. And according to that Numbio, if I'm saying that right, their score is 89.2, again, slightly below the average 100 for U.S. cities, has affordable living, great areas to travel to, to see, to explore. Utilities, water, gas tends to be pretty affordable in Florida. Groceries tend to be a little generally lower than the uh, national average. But of course, the taxes are what's a huge benefit, right? Zero percent personal income tax. It's a no tax state. And there are even homestead exemptions that can be claimed for primary residents that will reduce your total tax value on your home of what you're paying in property tax. So overall, Florida is a great option, which I know so many people already know that. But the future of retirement, like it is difficult to predict exactly what cost of living is going to look like when you're going to retire, whether that's 10, 15, 20 years, right? What is the population growth? What are housing trends? What type of you know government policies are in place in the state that you're looking to retire to? What type of income tax or sales tax? Or, you know, there's so many different taxes that are snuck in that we don't even realize. When I first moved to Arizona, I was used to paying $53 for a plate tag, right, for your registration for your car, $53. And when I first moved to Arizona and had my car transferred here and got my driver's license and got my registration done, I was shocked that it was thousands of dollars for that same little sticker that goes on your plate. And so that's not something that I, of course, even thought about or factored in. But when you're going to retire and you don't have consistent income coming in and you're living off of your savings, off of your investments, you want to factor in all of those other expenses to know the general cost of what it's going to be. Unfortunately, so many Americans are not prepared for retirement. And a study in 2019 showed that 62% of working households in the U.S. US have no retirement savings. That's why this show and, and following information like this is so important because we don't want to work forever, right? Working forever and trying to retire on Social Security benefits is not a good plan. You want to be able to earn more, save more, invest more so that you can have more life in your years. Like imagine if for some reason technology advances and we're able to live into our hundreds and be healthy, right? You don't want to run out of money. So you want to make sure that you plan now so that you are saving, investing, and that you can retire early and most importantly, rich and have the lifestyle that you want and that you have now so that you're not having to make drastic changes when you're older. All right. So you heard those big numbers in the beginning. If you don't have 1 million, 2 million or more in retirement, there's a few things that you can start doing now in order to maximize your investments. Number one, you have to reduce expenses. It is not the sexiest topic. I totally understand that. But knowing how to reduce your expenses so that you can invest more and save more is going to be critically important in order for you to save for your retirement. So go through your monthly statements. Go through your credit card statements. Go through your bank accounts. How can you reduce just 10% of your expenses? What can you cut out? Remember, building wealth and investing is playing the long game. The more you say to now will enable you to say yes to much, much more later. Number two, are you maximizing your contributions to a Roth IRA, your company provided retirement account if you have one, or a solo or self-employed 401k if you have a small business or you're working for yourself? 
even though the market right now is certainly not doing well, when you play the long game and you invest over decades, all of the data shows that over time you will be secure and you will have more in your retirement. So make sure that you take advantage of any catch-up contributions that are available to you and boost those retirement savings, whether they're mutual funds, whatever's available to you, maximize that retirement because it's not just about investing in your retirement vehicles. It's also about the tax reduction savings that you have now when you do it. Number three, Depending on your risk tolerance, you may want to consider some other types of investments that are going to give you a slightly higher return. Always make sure that you do careful research in order to determine what investments these are and if they're going to work with you. Invest in having a solid fiduciary or a financial advisor. Make sure they're, they're a certified pro if you're going to be giving someone money and make sure that you do your due diligence. Understand that most financial professionals get paid on your investments. They don't get paid when you make more money or if you don't make any money at all. So you always want to work with someone you trust. Number four, how can you increase the amount of money you make? Your income is the vehicle. It's the number one thing that if you make more money, you can invest more money so that you have more money when you want to retire. How can you increase what you're currently earning? Do you need to offer additional revenue streams inside of your business? Do you need to create additional products or offerings? If you're currently working for a job, is there something that you can do on the side for yourself? Can you start a side hustle or a side gig? Is there a way that you could package your knowledge in order to sell your knowledge or services to potential clients. If you're already doing all of those things, is there something that you can take on in a part-time basis? Look, there is no shame. In fact, I anybody would tell me that they are driving for DoorDash or Uber, like I props to you, brother. Like I am so proud of you for doing the work, making sure that you're making more money and not just you know, binging on Netflix or scrolling on social media. So what can you do to start making more money now so that you can invest more money now so that you have more in retirement and more life in your years? And remember, it is never too late to start investing. Obviously, the best time to do it was yesterday. The second best time is now. So if you're not investing on a consistent basis, start to automate that habit, start to invest what you can. And if you can decrease those expenses and increase those earnings, don't add that to your monthly budget, add it to your investment portfolio so that you can build more wealth more quickly. Okay guys, thanks so much for tuning in to this episode of Generation Wealth. We'll see you next time.